As time passed and the world moved on, Tantier once again returned to the old ways. And by that I mean he was back to training and consulting athletes. This time he does it under the name SNAC, which stands for Scientific Nutrition for Advanced Conditioning. A company who supplies supplements to athletes along with workout regimens and advanced training techniques to help maximize performance. Does that sound familiar? Almost sounds like a story I've heard before. Yes, it sounds exactly like what Balco did, but this time it's without the steroids and the edge comes from a technique called oxygen modulation. Basically comes down to fighters working out in the gym with these fancy mask intents. The mask supply less oxygen or more oxygen. For example, you can reduce the amount of oxygen you intake to simulate altitude training. This enables you to train longer at a higher level of intensity. Best of all, it's clean. A stable in the boxing world for conditioning gains. A method of training that Conte claims is stupid. The was live high, train high. Yes. Well, that really is the worst for you. Even though he mimics altitude training with his snazzy Rocky mask, these athletes come to Conte for an edge in training, but he's using methods Ivan Drago used in the Rocky movie. Meaning the edge is gone, the methods and technology is old from the 1980s, but I digress. At this time, I would like to remind you that Conte is not a sports scientist. He is not a doctor, even though he claims that Nike called him their doctor. Step Marion, we went to this hotel, we had this meeting. I explained to them, listen, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't have, I'm not a PhD or an MD, but I can explain all this to you. One was an MD and the other was a, was a PhD. And they talked to them to see if they could present this information. Well, we don't care, you're our doctor. This guy gets it. Conte's biggest success came when he connected with Patrick Arnold. Conte never competed in sports other than high school. He never trained a champion from scratch. So I asked fighters, what edge does Conte provide? Is it his super high tech fancy material? Is it his super high tech fancy gym with the wall of shame and fancy plastic tent? He's got a bag, a ring, a bike, a tent, and even some weights and even an oxygen mask. I mean, compared to the UFC, uh, I'll let you be the judge. I wouldn't hold my breath while you look for a good answer. Life after Balco has been business as usual minus the cheating, Conte said. He's back to helping athletes. Patrick Arnold, on the other hand, did three months in prison for conspiracy to distribute steroids. He would also continue to work as a chemist, and this time for a more noble purpose, working with Don Diagostino to further the research in the new field of ketogenics, a field where medical advancements are helping kids with epilepsy to control or even in some cases completely stop seizures. Marion Jones would go on and have a whirlwind of a fallout. She would continue to deny the use of PEDs into 2007. She would admit to using PEDs prior to the 2000 Summer Olympics. She would be stripped of all of her medals from 2000 and onwards, Jones would also go broke and even sell her mom's home to stay afloat. She had gone from one of the first, if not the first, millionaire female track athlete to a tarnished athlete and a liar in the eye of many. She would serve six months in prison for her charges. Barry Bonds would go on to fight in court that he never used PEDs, even though it was leaked that he admitted using a lotion who his trainer supplied who was directly connected to Conti. Then there's the man of the hour. Today he runs a super gym for the top fighters in boxing. The company Snack that many of you are probably familiar with is Conti's new baby. What I find interesting when doing research for this episode was this one coincidence. And wouldn't you know it, Conti, a man who built a career on navigating the gray waters of track and field, found himself in boxing with the grayest of waters, a sport that has no actual governing entity. So the rules and regulations for boxing change from state to state. This is true about drug testing for PEDs as well. Most of the time, fighters must write it into their contract, but unless you're competing in the Olympics, it's unlikely to get tested into a high profile fight. The perfect place to become a white knight for the war against PEDs. He would go on the Joe Rogan experience and say he was consulted by VADA to consult on details regarding testing and procedures. Who else to consult but the most prolific cheat of his era? But this to me did not seem right. In the end, Conti is no chemist, and for as much as he likes saying that Nike said he was, well, we don't care, you're our doctor. He lacks the actual knowledge and skills of a chemist. He flexes a vocabulary to confuse people and make himself sound educated. But in truth, Conti is nothing more than a great salesman with great charisma. He's a fun guy to listen to, and the constant name dropping and snitching will have you rewinding sections of his interviews. Because you just can't believe that this guy just said what he said. Patrick Arnold was the true genius, 
and this is shown in his work. He synthesized the majority of the substances that went undetected. He would go on to be known as the godfather of pro-hormones due to the success of his supplements in the bodybuilding community. And in present day, he's still working synthesizing molecules that once seemed impossible. So why would Vada go talk to Conte and not Arnold? Did they really want help in testing or did they want to know who else Conte had on the payroll? Vada would go on multiple articles and interviews to clear the air. They would go on to distance themselves from Conte. In most recent years, Conte has gone on the record to say that he personally paid for Vada testing of his fighters, adding further fuel to the fire. Many people online question the nature of the transaction. Since Vada does not disclose the amounts given by Conti, many question if he should even be paying for it. Nonetheless, fighters still come to him for help and hope to one day be in the contest of wall of, hopefully wall of shame. No wait, wall of fame, right? I think it's a wall of fame they want to be on. Mikey Garcia, Devin Haney, Sean Porter, Caleb Plant, Danny Jacobs, Andre Berto, and Mario Barrios all work with Conti for reasons that elude me to be honest. They all wear the gear and talk about how great his supplements are, just like Balco athletes did back in the day. Conti's edge is that he can fill holes in nutrition that will aid in performance in addition to oxygen modulation training, aka high altitude training with a spin. A problem that a dietitian can fix for you if nutrition is your biggest concern. After all, food is the best source of nutrients and minerals since they are the most bioavailable source for them. Oxygen modulation training is maybe a slight edge, but similar advantages can be gained by training at high altitude. And finally, Conte is not a fighter and never even been around a ring until he decided to become the white knight against PEDs in boxing. His only boxer we know he worked with was Shane Mosley, and he was providing him with PEDs. For Conti, this is not about fighters or about sports. It's about having fun. After all, it's his life motto. He snitched on everyone he has worked with continuously and even till this day exhibits with no remorse for playing a part in defrauding the public. I don't know about y'all, but this is not the person I would like to work with. Last but not least, I ask athletes watching this, why would you ever take a risk to associate yourself with such a controversial character? His methods are outdated and his experience in the sport is minimal. He comes with baggage as if you were boarding a flight to Mexico. I just don't get it. Specifically with athletes involved in Balco claiming in many occasions that they were unaware the lotion or injections were PEDs. Mosley said he thought they were vitamins. But it's hard to think that all of these athletes were naive as well. In the end, I end up with more questions than answers. Why does anyone work with this man? Why don't UFC fighters work with him? Why is he harassing people online? Don't his stable fighters require attention? The parallels in Balco and Snag are enough to raise concerns. They both offer help to athletes to improve performance through science and vitamins. Only this time, Conti is a good guy, not a bad guy. In his world, he is the loudest voice against PEDs in boxing, and his state-of-the-art gym offers training you can't find anywhere else in the world. The biggest question is why does the boxing community even allow this man to be involved in such a degree. He's entitled to redemption and I'm not one to determine what would define that. But I do think he has no place in professional sport training where he aided cheating and corruption. Conti ultimately stopped because he got caught, not because he had a change of heart. Just listen to the Joe Rogan Experience podcast on Spotify and listen to himself admit it. Yet, fighters still think they need his help.